<clears throat> All right. Get into this game here in one second. Doing kind of a bit of a impromptu stream tonight because I missed yesterday because I was helping some friends test for an IQ that I didn't think that I was going to go to. Then it turns out I'm going to go to the IQ. So I want to just hammer down my Death Shadow deck. I guess what I'm flirting around with is I'm flirting around a little bit with this. Well, no, I want one of these, but I don't know if I want this or this. I kind of want a card. Like, this hostage taker's been a little surprising when it comes to, like, it killed a batter skull. Got rid of a batter skull a little while ago when I was playing earlier today. Which was kind of cool. It also took an ensnaring bridge and a worm coil engine. So that, that's pretty cool how this does this. And then I might want one more card here. I don't know what it'll be. But I'm going to play against. Apparently, there's quite a bit of fair decks at um, the place that I'm going to play at. So I might want one more. One more fair card, and I'm not sure what. But I'm going to jump into some games here. Hopefully we do well in these two leagues. Yeah, apparently they said there's a lot of Jeskai, a lot of Eldrazi. And that's those are like the big archetypes. So the hostage taker is good against Eldrazi because it's just another removal spell. And it um, it's just another removal spell and gets another way to kill a chalice. This hand. This hand is good, not great. And I might be able to do better than this. My opponent mulligan and I went a mulligan. Yeah, we did worse. I get two scries and one. I get one scry, two draw steps out of land. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. Alright, there's our one scry. And then we get to look through it. Look two times for a land, so. Alright, we're playing a Death Shadow Mirror. <sighs> That's funny. Then we just happen to get lucky and hit our land drop. Uh, I'm going to take a look, see if my opponent's hitting the land or not. Oh, oh! It's the red, black, hollow one deck, so they're not hitting the land. So I guess I'll just take the looting, as the looting sees the most cards per mana. News constrictor is kind of spicy, but yeah, we'll just take this. Pass. My opponent's gonna miss a land drop. Hopefully, I hit a land drop and can play a Tarn of Life. And they get a redraw next turn. Land. There we go. Alright, we're in good shape now. This goalie's larger than anything that they're going to present. And I can fetch for a red source if Team or Battle Rage becomes relevant. So we're going to cycle that. Doesn't see what you're gonna hit. And here comes a concession. Is I think Moto's freezing up. Yep. Yeah. So the red black. E. Hey man. You never from Grixis Death Shadow. What do you mean? I never play it. I do play it from time to time. E. Dozen. I just I'm, I'm going. 
I'm going to an IQ this weekend, so I want to make sure that I'm ready to go. I think I want this. It's another removal spell that kills delve cards. And I don't know. I don't think I want my stubs. I never know if this is like a Lingering Souls matchup or not. I guess we can bring back one of these to bring up. I don't really want to uh, add another color to my deck, but I do want something that can get rid of the delve cards. Just kind of keep it simple. Don't overboard. Yeah, I guess this is what we're going to do. Yeah, I got a. I don't know. I think I've got. I probably have. 12 or 15 hours worth of content on my YouTube channel for Grixis Shadow. I played I played one night of Esper Shadow. Keep this. Seems pretty good. So opponent's gonna cast the first their first spell of the match. That thing's annoying. I think I'm gonna kill this. Yeah, I think we're just gonna. Because this thing just gets like out of control. I can play Tarmogoyf next turn or a or double Inquisition, depending on what my opponent does here. Hmm. I didn't know these decks. Some of these decks don't even play green sources. They just like play into the noose. The noose is loose. All right, well, now I'm just going to get on the battlefield. This is cute because this can, like, is relevant to making um, this larger, but then it also can uh, enable Hollowed One, which is kind of cool. All right, opponent doesn't want to discard any cards. All right, we need to stop doing that. Ancient Grudge. Hmm. Guess I'll ditch this looting. Yep, that grows. So I can't block this next turn. <coughs> this news constrictor. I can block this to hold this off. So my opponent's gonna double block. Double block, cycle street wraith, discard a card, I only get one of them. Yeah, so I'm just gonna pass. I need some form of interaction here to deal with. These two morons. I like this card standard. I was a fan of this. Play this in my green white tokens deck from time to time. Okay, so we knew that was going to happen. Probably going to fetch a tapped red source at this point. So if my opponent, yeah, we're not going to. Surprised they didn't do anything with that looting. Because they could have just cracked in for a lot more damage. They just flashed back their faithless looting. So I'm going to have to take a look in their hand, see what's going on. I'd like to find, like, a Death Shadow or a Grim Flare. Just a threat. Removal spell would be nice. Liliana wouldn't be bad because it would help push me towards Delirium. Is that abrupt decay? Now they're going to dismember my time of life. Okay, that's unfortunate. Alright. Let's take a look.
Blood Moon. All right, we'll take Blood Moon. I kind of want to just take this Ancient Grudge too, because purely because I don't want my opponent like if they go to cycle through this Faithless Looting next turn, I want to give them less options. So like it is kind of mopey, but I I think I'm actually going to do it. Because it's just going to make it so they have less, like if they have two cards they hit with this Faithless Looting, then um, two good cards are going to get rid of one of them. I could grab a Hostage Taker. Hostage Taker would help solidify my board a little bit, but I think I'm just going to grab Death Shadow. Then this goes and gets... I'm going to get hit for 5 next turn. Do I get a basic? 5 go to 7? Yeah, I think I just get a basic. And then if I draw like a Traverse next turn... I Means my guy can get lightning bolted, but my opponent can't keep both lightning bolt and land if their face is looting. So let me get this going here. Let me get this nightbot going. Yeah, there's the looting, so we're gonna take f I guess only four. And if he attacks with this, because of how Death Shadow works, we get a free block. One night bot. You can do it. Oh, Johnny, thank you very much for the subscription. Lol. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate the support, my friend. Oh wow, we're gonna get night bot it's gonna now have a million windows here. So now they can only keep one card. Didn't that already come? I'm not sure, Johnny. It just popped up right now. Old well, GC Brissett down there is running a tear. It was Splinter Twin today. I guess not Splinter Twin. Rest in peace. The finer days of modern. So they ditched another Blood Moon. Okay, that's a pretty good draw. So now we eat a creature. Well, that's not exactly accurate, right? If you can survive turn five, yes, yes. I mean, the deck was very, very good. It's probably still fine, even if it's a turn slower, right? At least when you play it, it is. You do you do pilot it well. So I think I'm willing to give up this Liliana to crack in here with this Death Shadow, just to kind of start putting the pressure on. Hey, yes, Meg. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wise words right there, Johnny. So I'm going to lose my Liliana, but unless our opponent gets some pressure on the board, then I'm going to crack them back for four, and then they're in the abyss. Goblin Lord, draw four cards and discard three cards at random. Hmm. Isn't it just better to cast that? Unless they're one card's dynamite. <laughs> she says hi as well, Johnny. All right. I'd like to hit a Traverse. If I get a Traverse, I can go get a Hostage Taker. Get rid of that hollowed one. So this is a free attack for me because he can't kill me on the crack back. And then they have to leave one back and then I'm faced to top deck, I guess. That Polluted Delta wasn't a terrible draw. I do have... One more overgrown tomb in my deck. And I'm just going to take this because 
opponent's not going to make me commit. There's no sense in taking three points of damage to not kill them. Hog tech. I've, I've liked the the hostage taker is like weird. It was it's kind of sweet. Like I was playing against Lantern earlier, and I traversed for it to hit an ensnaring bridge. And I was playing against Grix's Death Shadow and took a Gurmag Angler and like cast it. So I was I was a fan of it. I brought it in here. Yeah, it hits artifacts. All right, so now opponent's playing around. So now that they're threatening to trade with the Death Shadow, well, they're not going to trade any more. I love this card so much. This is my home girl. There she is. Now my opponent's just in the abyss for the rest of the game. No, yeah, this guy's in a lot of trouble. My opponent's got a lightning bolt, I guess. They still it still gets the job done here. I'm just gonna fetch a tap land. Well, I guess I'm gonna fetch a shock land, because I want this I guess they would have to go black source into angler in order to have this larger. So they'd have to draw the two cards there. So yeah, I'm just gonna fetch a tap land. There's no sense in getting too out of control. Even a fetch land I could still get lightning bolted. Every time I close one, two, round, it's yeah. Scavenging news is, yeah. Scavenging news is the uh, is the absolute stones at cleaning up, cleaning up a game. Booze is life. Yeah, ooze, ooze is very good against very good against you. For sure. Like, as long as it can survive. Like, ooze, whenever you top deck ooze, oh, I didn't think about that. No, they don't have another black source. Yeah, they don't have another black source. They can't dismember this death shadow. <laughs> At least they went out on their own terms. So I would have gone that into rage, which would have been good enough either way. No, we don't want that. We want Nightbot. Auto. I don't have my second screen going right now. Oh, gosh, come on. I will join. There we go. Let's hope we can finish this out. Profit the League. Then I'll jump back into another one. Yes, you did very well today. I will keep this hand. It kind of, like this is a bit of an awkward hand, but at least all of my cantrips cost zero. This is Wooded Foothills, so I'm playing Burn or Titan Shift, okay. Dredge or Jund? Playing against Jund. Nice. Play some fair, honest magic. I didn't necessarily like. So, TF deck, like, I've been struggling. Okay. I've been struggling between. I don't think I'm going to traverse for a land. This is going to be a resource based matchup, and I get three draws here. Um, I don't necessarily like the, uh, um, gosh, I can't even think. I didn't like Hazret because I didn't think it was very good if it's counter spells when you have counter spells because you're incentivized to keep those in your hand. That's a bit annoying. Um, so like that made it a little awkward for me, but it's going to give us three quarters away to Delirium. But has I just certainly do like Hazard better than Ranger Vios at the moment. So I know this is gone. Lightning Helix, so it's the Mardu deck. 
and our opponent missed a land drop. I guess I'm going to wait on this to get some information. There's no need to crack it now, because even if I need a land, I can traverse for one. Okay, so now we can scry. I should have done this. I, I missequenced this. So I'm going to keep Grim Flare on top. Even though the Helix will kill the Grim Flare unless my opponent doesn't find another land. So I'm going to leave this untapped. I'd like to draw another land to get Liliana going. Yeah, I definitely I definitely like Hazard. I'm, I'm struggling between Hazard, Hostage Taker, uh, just like a high impact traverse target. I'm struggling with a little bit. Oh, let me, uh, let me plug my Wi-Fi in, let my internet in. Let me plug this in so we get a little better internet going on. Yeah, it depends on what you want to do. So I kind of want to keep my life total pretty high here. So I think I'm actually going to go like this. Like there's, like there, I'm in no hurry to hurt myself. And I think I'm just going to get, well, I guess alternatively here. No, I'm just going to get Blood Crypt. Play the Liliana. Tick up and discard my, probably my Fatal Push. I usually don't like doing this, and I could have gone, I guess I couldn't go double threat. I hope to hit a land next turn, so I can go like, Death Shadow into, um, like Death Shadow, Traverse for Death Shadow, play Grim Flare. Yeah, because then they get, get a Lingering Souls. I mean, at least Grim Flare is going to help chew through that. So, you know, bolt this Liliana, I guess I assume. Yeah. So there's one card we're going to get out of it. That's not bad. So let's go here. I'm going to take a hard removal spell. Yeah, I'm going to take a Terminate. And then grab a Grim Flare. And I'm just going to leave my Liliana because they're just going to discard Lingering Souls, which will unclog their hand. And I want to keep both of these Traverses for Death Shadow targets. All right, so opponent's going to find a land now. I also, like, might play a Kataki. They didn't hit a land. Oh, my God. That is just unreal. So I think I'm going to traverse for Death Shadow, attack, set the top of my deck. So I kind of want this Tarmaloif, but I also want this fetch land to be able to protect. Well, no, that just means I get double Death Shadow. Yeah, so now we're just going to go like this. Get another green source, shuffle our top card away. This is so annoying to do in real life. I don't think this deck's very good. I think the guy that plays it, plays it very well, and he also, he plays an incredible amount. Like, the guy's just on moto all the time. Like, I see him on moto pretty much every single time that I'm on there. I just think that guy's very good with it, which proves that, you know, you can play anything in modern and win. I just don't think it's as impressive as his record would suggest.
whoever the whatever name the trophy the trophy winner is. It's not putting up results outside of him. Like if if his deck, like, um, do I want the hostage taker? What do I take? I can take Bedlam Reveler. I can't cast it, but I can take it. So maybe I maybe I don't want that. I don't want the denials. I kind of want denials. Yeah, your deck's like it's not super great, but you play it well. It's not like it doesn't stand out modern. You know, like it's not a standout deck that does well by percentages. The same thing with this deck. You just play it well, you know? Uh, we are taking hostages, but I don't know what to sideboard in. I don't think I want these. So we're going to cut the red from our deck. I'm not in love with Fatal Push. I'd much rather have like Collective Brutality because that can take, still kills whatever the dumb card is. Um, whatever the card is. Um, young Pyromancer, but then can also act as a discard spell. My opponent just has a lot of removal in their deck. I think I have to keep a couple stubs in because of... Um, God, I have 63 cards. I'm not bringing this hostage taker in. I'm going to cut a couple Liliana's in the draw. I might look to bring those back in on the play. This is a hard deck to sideboard against. I'm just saying you're not seeing anybody pilot this deck anywhere except Magic Online. Like, I think this is a Magic Online deck. This guy's got it figured out. But I'm bringing in my own Lingering Souls, right, TF deck? So it makes it a little awkward. Like, I don't really want to have Coast Lex Return and Lingering Souls in my deck. This hand's fantastic. My opponent's got a mulligan. We even have our Swamp, just in case we get mooned. Goodbye, Liliana. Yeah, I think bringing in Kozilex Return is, like, suggesting that I want to play towards, like, the long game, and I don't really want to play the long game against this deck. Yeah, there goes Liliana, I knew you well. Maybe I'll have two Lilianas in my deck, my sideboard, like. I guess I should have fetched there, but I'm going to be able to do that next turn anyways. But if I had gone Fetch Shock and drawn a Fetch Land, I could have played Death Shadow. So we can answer this. I guess I just take command. And I might end up thought seizing the second half of a lingering souls token. What did my opponent do with this? Sacred Foundry, Young Pyromancer. Let me see if my opponent kept on top. They went on the bottom. So if I go Fetch Shock, Brutality, Ditch My Thought Seize, I trade with one half of Lingering Souls, which is probably worth it. You know, that feels kind of bad, but like I have to trade with this card somehow. Over Tomb. I'm going to leave the Dismember. Ditch this thought seize. Yeah, we take one half of Lingering Souls. Which doesn't feel great, but the thought seize is basically a dead card also. And we can like dismember a token if we want. And get what is this? What is he fetching for? You really just draw another Lingering Souls? Oh. That's annoying. 
discard spell. All right, so we got two spirits versus what I have going on. So I'll fetch a tapped Godless Shrine. I'm not going to use a card on this yet. I might regret that if I rip like a Liliana because then I'll have to take a bunch of damage from my dismember because this will have to fetch like a breeding pool. And I would like to draw Lingering Souls real bad. Don't need Bloodstained Mire. I'm gonna be patient and continue to take a bit more damage from this. Just fetch tap lands. Like I don't want to waste a card on these spirits. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave a land in my hand so that I don't get Kolagons commanded. And I guess I'm gonna get Overgrown Tomb so I can traverse for like a Tarmaloif without fetch shocking. Am I cast in this thing? I don't think I'm cast in this. I don't think that's the way to do it. Okay. I mainly want to play play a gut plan. Yeah, it's got young pyromancer in it, which is sweet. So do I want to get Grim Flare or Death Shadow? I think I want to go read Grim Flare. Because, like, either is going to die to Fatal Push. <coughs> and if I get to untap with Grim Flare, then, like, he can't just chump block it. It would be very surprising if my opponent didn't have a removal spell for this, though. They had many turns, many opportunities to draw one. No, I'm untapping. Come on. Come on. No. That was wishful thinking from my part. So I need to kill one of these, I think. Because, like, now, next turn, if I don't kill one of these, then we die to... All right. So now we're just going to go on one end. And I'm going to fetch. But I'm not going to shock, because we're not going to die to a burn spell. If my opponent wants to, like command away this dismember then well I guess that was still that was wrong to do that was just stupid because I'm gonna have plenty of mana to operate next turn uh, there's no difference between three and four or four and five so we'll get this because we have stub in our deck that's a pretty good draw So, oh, I do, I do stupid things for sure. So I think I'm just gaining life. I think I'm just gaining life. I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this dismember. I guess I'm gaining. What if he's got Kolagon's command? I'm just so afraid of Kolagon's command. Yeah, I think we're just. If I'm the best way to play around Kolagon's command is to just just escalate with two modes, gain and drain. And then get rid of a spirit, get rid of this, and then flashback, lingering souls, and then be ahead three souls to one. The weird thing about like lingering souls mirrors is it often is like slightly unfun because 
it feels like it just comes down to who draws more of them. You know, like I, I outlinger insults you. Similar to probably like Snapcaster mirrors. <clears throat> Looks like I drew one more Snapcaster than you did, which probably means that I won. Wow, you didn't even attack with it. I'm gonna check my top card. Street Wraith. So I'm dead to double burn spell. I guess I'm gonna leave one back because I can double burn spell, but then I can beat burn spell. But am I am I gonna beat Kolagon's command anyways? <clears throat> it's three turns versus two turns. So three turn, four turn clock. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave one back. Then I'm probably just gonna play out my uh, play out my <clears throat> cast my whatever the guy is next turn. So if I don't block. Don't block, I died a lightning bolt and Kologon's command. I guess, yeah, that's so stupid. I should have just attacked with this. I'm gonna go lightning bolt, Kologon's command, okay. All right, I'm just gonna go in with these two. I might as well attack with all of them. <clears throat> but then I don't lose the Fatal Push Lightning Bolt. <clears throat> if I hold one back. It doesn't really matter because I abyss my opponent the turn after. So I think we're going to go like this, play around, play around more stuff. Is it? Sorry about that. I'm doing a little more thinking in this stream than I normally do. Normally I'm a little bit lighter, but I got an IQ I'm gonna go to on Saturday, so I'm trying to focus a little more. Okay, there's another Swifty. I might just win this game over two turns in the air with Lingering Souls. And then just like, oh, that's just stupid. Because now I can get rid of one of those creatures. Yeah. So again, I think I'm just going to attack with everybody. No, I'm, I got this game I'm way far ahead in this game. I don't really know if I want to attack with. Leave two blockers back. They have to chump this, which means... Removal spell, removal spell. Alternatively, I can just leave these Death Shadow back and attack for three in the air over two turns. And then Lightning Bolt doesn't kill any of these things. Yeah, I kind of like that. <clears throat> yeah. Most of the time, I'm, I'm a little more lighthearted. Like, I'm chatting more, but I'm trying to hammer out my last couple slots here. Do I get Grim Flare? So I'm going to go Chump Chump Kill and Grim Flare still get tramples over for one. <clears throat> oh, the thing that no one ever remembers. Street Wraith has Swamp Walk. You are right, Johnny. Oh, that was stupid. We'll get this guy here because this somewhat has Swamp Walk, which is Trample. So now they have to go like removal spell into put three power in front of this to not die. Uh, 
Yeah, you were right, Johnny. <sighs> yeah, we got it. Well, there's the 4 1. I'm going to get some water, put the deck list up here, see if I want to change anything. Open one of these chests because Johnny resubbed. One right here is for for the for GC percent. Hmm. We got a planeswalker. One that doesn't see any play anywhere. All right, I'm gonna go grab some of the drink. We'll be right back. All right, so I don't really know if I want to change it. The only, like, like I'm tempted to make this Kozilek's return a second Liliana Last Hope, because then that gives me, I guess, what would be effectively seven fair cards to bring in. And I would cut one, two, three, four, switch a land, and then it's like Jeskai decks also. I don't even know. I guess Hostage Taker is not even that good against Jeskai. So I bring in like two Last Hopes and four Lingering Souls. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to run it back as is and then see how it goes again and think about it. Again, everybody, thank you very much for hanging out the night we got a couple people tuning in hanging out my name is uh dylan hubby and i'm a sponsored member of the card horror network it's what part of my streams are brought to you by uh if you guys like what you see please hit the follow button and if you ever want to catch parts of the stream that you miss you can look at my youtube channel it's below so Alright, first match. Playing against Shardo. I would like to play first. Yeah, um... This hand's like pretty medium, but I get I get a scry. I'm two thirds, I'm basically like three quarters of the way to delirium. I'm gonna keep this. This is probably I probably would not keep this if I wasn't on the play. If I couldn't like stub a cantrip or something like that, which I will do. I love me. I love stubbing me some cantrips. Death shadow. Sixteen, thirteen. 13. I just don't have any way to get that guy in play. It's the one card I have that does get me out of bad situations, but... So I'm playing against Eldrazi and Texas, or probably Eldrazi Tron. That's not bad. Um, it's gonna give me Overgrown Tomb. I'll probably Abrupt Decay a Chalice as opposed to stubbing it if my opponent gives me the option. <clears throat> uh, 
another temple. Then you get Thought Nuts here too. Alright, yeah, we're just gonna replicate this. Because Stubborn Denial can hit like Dismember or later in the game it can hit Karn or um, whatever the other card is. All is Dust, which is pretty important. Discard Spell. Okay. So that's going to give me Delirium. Let's take a look. <laughs> I really hope my opponent doesn't have a hand that's rolled up with chalices. This, this is going to get much harder. They did have the thought knot, and they decided not to go for it. So there's no sense in me traversing for a Death Shadow because he's going to take it. I guess I am going to traverse for a Street Wraith. Cycle the Street Wraith. And then play Death Shadow. Because I'm going to do this anyways in order to hurt myself. To get more... Um, to get more... My Death Shadow larger than his... Um, dot nuts here. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But at least it means that he's going to leave me with stubborn denial, which is going to cover this all his dust. And I have four thought seizes left in my deck that I could have hit there to strip the thought nuts here. It's just unfortunate that I <laughs> hit a really good card. Probably one of my better cards in this matchup against our opponent. But they might. No, they've got to take Stubborn Denial. They've got to take Liliana. Yeah. Can't leave me with Stub. Or can't leave me with Liliana. I get some Thought Nuts here. So, either way leaves me dead to a Reality Smasher, so I might as well, I guess I could have fetched and waited, but if my opponent had, doesn't, didn't draw a Reality Smasher last turn, or does not have Reality Smasher on top, then, again, it's just difficult for my opponent to race me, and I don't want to crack this Polluted Delta when it can turn on Revolt for my Fatal Push. <clears throat> Again, if there's a Reality Smasher, there's a Reality Smasher. Like, that's sometimes the game we sign up for. Another thought on here, okay. That's bad news. Just because I'm not going to be able to answer this all is dust next turn, which is coming anyways, and then I'm just. I basically have to draw a Teamer Battle Rage off the top now. Or like removal spell into Teamer Battle Rage. Because they're going to land all is dust next turn no matter what. Uh, Apollo the door, you can check out the, uh, there's a little cool little button um, on the screen that you can see that also if you need to. Yeah, Santa Claus is coming to town and we're, we're losing this, this uh, game. Unless we draw exactly, um, <clears throat> wow, okay. I don't understand that play from my opponent. 
Now, they still have the Aulus Dust coming in, so I've got to attack. Because they either kill me, or maybe they do something stupid, like block this because they're afraid of Team of Battle Rage. Because the Aulus Dust just finishes me off anyways. Because I, I don't have any interaction for it. So I just got to hope that my opponent either chumps or double blocks and trades. Wow. Is this real life? Dude, my opponent's just like, screw it. I don't really want to win this game. Unless they have a dismember. If they have a dismember, this makes somewhat sense. Okay. I don't really know what's going on, to tell you the truth. They must have a dismember. All right, we can't play that because um, yeah, there's the mine because we know about the all is dust. They could have like a reality smasher. Which, you know, they're just gonna. All right, I do not understand what is occurring. Must mean my opponent's got something like a... Uh, they just have, must have some other form of interaction. Yeah, I am too. Um, so I can go down to one and play Death Shadow and Street Wraith. Or I can cycle the Street Wraith and look to find something else. What would I want to find? Another Death Shadow, a Fatal Push. Yeah, it seems like a random draw is better than a 3-4. Like, I don't think a 3-4 is going to do it against this deck here. So let's... All right. I would have preferred something else, but... Um, I went 4-1 in the first league, Paulo. Plays Moto's. Looks like it's lagging here a little bit. Am I dead? Yeah, walking ballista. Okay. I guess we should have, yes. I, I, we probably actually should have. Like, it would have been 100% right because the line that we're choosing loses to Walking Ballista anyways. So we should have just, like, gotten it instead. Is this the Austin Powers theme song? Oh, that's awesome. All right, so I like Ancient Grudge. I like Hostage Taker. I actually really don't like Fatal Push in this matchup. Like, I'm not a big push person. Inquisition's not good either. Inquisition's better on the draw, because I can, like, it gives me just guaranteed interaction to hit a Chalice. Nah, push is not very good, Johnny. He doesn't kill anything unless you've got revolt, which can be hard to do. Isn't always guaranteed. And like, I'm pushing matter shaper, which always feels gross. Then my removal spells are Liliana, Dismember, Hostage Taker, Abrupt Decay, and then just having a, a bigger creature than they have. Probably can cut a traverse as they're going to bring in relics. I'll cut one of these. Just shave a little bit. Deck's pretty 
been built to be pretty threatened, so I think I can get away with get rid of a traverse. First, got the no land here. All right, this is a good hand. I'm fetching to get a Tarmoy from play anyway, so this one's not very really good. I'd much rather find a discard spell. So I'm gonna stub probably anything. My opponent plays a mat, plays <clears throat> a relic. Then I'm gonna stub it. I'm not gonna save this for a chalice because I'm gonna get Tarmogoyf down. Overgrown Tomb. We're just gonna make Tarmo Boy for 5 4 or 4 5. Alright, hopefully we don't get if we don't get chalice, we're gonna get double double death shadow into play. Next turn, pending we find a way to hurt ourselves. Which I guess we got like thought seeds that'll hurt ourselves. And we've got fetch lands and street rates. So there's eleven fetch lands, three street rates, and four thought seasons. That will be great draws next turn. Mindstone. So I thought they moved away from this. That was not a very good one. I would assume this means I'm going to get Thought Not Seared this turn. This might miss. It's just a chalice. So where's my problem I got? Thought Not, Endbringer, Endbringer. So Endbringer's beatable if I'm, if I'm on the board. I am going to get Thought Not Seared. But my opponent's a ways off casting and bringer. Our tarmac looks huge though. Like we're gonna be able to attack through this thought nuts here, which is nice. Then my opponent's probably gonna take team or battle rage. So they drew that. Fetch land, traverse, fetch land. That's not bad. Because that at least trades with realities with Thought Knots here, which I'm alright with. Well, we get in here for another five. Hopefully, my opponent doesn't rip an Eldrazi Temple. Because if we can not, if, like, because we're on pace to make it so they have to chump with either Endbringer. Or thought not seer in order to uh, get like in order to not die. So I feel all right about our spot. I'd love to get these dead shadows in the play. There's a temple. Oh, that's gross. Now I gotta get both Death Shadows in the play, like ASAP. Or rip like a, if I get a Liliana, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, that temple is gross. Temple is pretty savage. All right, that's good. So I'm gonna attack with Tarmogoy first. 
then run out two three threes. Then my opponent probably plays another Wastes, and then plays Endbringer. And then I'm gonna have to hope to rip something. Wow. So do I need the card? These have to tap, right? Tap. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the card. Because if I get a wide enough board, this tapping to not kill my creatures isn't gonna matter. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get the card. Less than stellar draw. One, two, three, four, five, one, four, five. He still has the way, so it doesn't even matter about grudging the mind stone. So I might as well just get both of these into play. And then hopefully hit something like another fetch land. Another fetch land would be a good draw, or a team or battle rage. <clears throat> uh, Temple is like super savage. Yep, there's Endringer. Oh, now they're gonna ghost quarter me. Maybe I was supposed to kill one of these Endbringers, but then again, if they just, like, if I draw a fetch land, let's do that magic. We're working on it, Nilla. We are working on it, my friend. Uh, yes. So no more, no more Team or Battle Rage or Ancient Rage. We do only have one red source. So, if I go to combat, taps one of these down, no he can't even, so if I go to combat, he can threaten to put both Endbringers in front of my Death Shadows. What if I attack with Grim Flare and I attack with Grim Flare and two Death Shadows before Street Raven? My opponent blocks Grim Flare, and then Street Wraith kills them. You'll draw Lily, just because you said it. That's not Lily on it, but it's pretty good. So, I kind of just want to attack with everybody. I get him a free eat, I get him for five. Eat block, I get him for five, and then it's Death Shadow, Tarmogoyf, which are both lethal against Endbringer. My opponent gets the first draw step. Alternatively, I can have Rick Flare and Tarmogoyf against a no board, which sounds better. So I'm gonna attack with both, both my shadows. Yeah. I mean, I was just thinking about it. I was wondering if like putting them to five was worth it. But I think I'm all right with this double trade. Yeah. They can't necessarily, they can't cast all his dust yet. So let's. A goif should should seal it. Saying so slap the baz there, Johnny. There's the land. Don't always God. Don't always dust me. Just another bringer. Okay. So I guess I'll ship him with Tarmogoyf.
Yeah, these hamburgers have been good. Leave the land. For it's probably just going to draw a card if I had to assume. Then even if they pin down my Tarmogoyf, I guess I can draw a card like find a creature, which would be pretty bad, because then they can pin down Tarmogoyf and block Grim Flare. Nah, sure. That gets them whatever that stupid card is, Seagate Wreckage, or the Tron piece, I guess. So now they pin down Tarn Life, or they have to block it. He just got, just decided to go get Tron, okay? I guess that makes it so that he can draw with Endbringer. And then they can, now they can play Worm Coil Engine, draw. So now they can just play Thought Not Seer. Then he's got to pin down Tarmogoyf in combat or block it. So let's. I probably should have thought seize first to play around Dismember. Yeah, now I'm like super screwed. Definitely should have thought seize first. That's so stupid. But even if he has Dismember, I get a shot in with Grim Flare and I can Thought Seize after combat. And I assume they'll just draw a card here. Set the top of my deck. I guess Dismember kills them. That's stupid. I'm speaking stupid. Dismember kills them. Been a long day at work. Ping. We got dismember. I think stubborn denial is what the doctor asked for. And we'll just thought seize. Opponent has drawn two bad ones. Let's hope they don't find another. Yeah, my opponent had a pretty. My reason to top denial was bad. Yep, topping denial was bad. Because they just main phase it. Yeah, that was stupid. Who my next card been? A traverse. Yeah, that was just stupid. You're right, Archmage, that was dumb. The whole point was like, stub saves me, but I have no way to draw the stub. So on the draw, I like to cut a little bit more removal, bring in another discard spell to be able to hit. That that could be another one of the reasons as well. So Grim Flare didn't look super great there. Because Grim Flare is just kind of smaller than everything. So maybe I cut Flare. Maybe I cut like a Flare. Bring back in another Traverse to stay. No problem, you live your life. Maybe I want to bring in one more Traverse. Or keep in one more push. Yeah, that seems... It's either Push or Traverse. Yeah, I just want to be traversing. My opponent plays a turn one relic and I puke. Yeah, we got a hostage taker, which is cool. Hostage taker's in here to steal some artifacts. Take some world take some worm coil engines. Yeah. So the hostage taker's been cool. I didn't do, really do anything with it while well, I've been streaming so far, but I took like an ensnaring bridge earlier today, and I took a one coil engine earlier today, and I took a Gurmag Angler. So like, 
That was pretty sweet. I actually cast the Gurmag Angler. Gosh, this hand has like no interaction against like big ugly creatures. But I can deal with a chalice until the cows come home. And I have a discard spell for some. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this. I think I'm keeping this as my opponent mulligan, and it's really hard for me to turn down a discard spell against an opponent that mulligans. Sand is pretty medium and it could it couldn't not bite me. Though. And if I lose this game because of this keep and like that's that's what we lost it for that love. Don't be a relic. Alright, All right, there's our there's our boy. Let's go get a watery grave. And let's check what our opponent has cooking. Yeah, turn two, thought not, which is what's going to happen. Ugh. That's just like vomit inducing. Oh, that hurts. At least I get to smoke this mine, I guess. But, yowch. <laughs> Alright, well. I think I'm going to smoke this map. And I'm going to do it with an Ancient Grudge. Just to get, like, just to get this. Make it so that it's going to be harder for them to get to this Endbringer. I can take a shot from this. And then this Tarmogoyf is outscales the Thought Knots here. I just hope our opponent like doesn't play a land. This Endbringer is just gonna kill us. If I could draw a, a Thought Seize next turn, it would be sweet. Thought Seize would grow Goyf. Make Goyf larger than all of his creatures. Oh, there's the mine. Oh man. Thoughtsies? It's not a Thoughtsies. Still should cast it. Just in case our opponent's sitting on it almost does. Nice. Nice. So here's like the sad thing is like we can't beat most spells from our opponent. And we also can't beat lands from our opponent. There's the land. Right on cue. So now I need like Liliana off the top and have my opponent not draw. Uh, traverse doesn't even do it because I can't even traverse with Delirium. And they're just gonna like rip this land and there's no justice in this world. Could have done that. What is going on?
Three, four, seven. They would have just killed me, right? I'm not crazy. My opponent's just like playing with the food a little bit, working me. Hopefully I draw a fatal push into a stubborn denial. That's not bad either. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We are good. Maybe we'll rattle off four in a row. There's the thought seeds. Needed that earlier. Those are really turn turn two thought nuts here, man. That'll get you. That will get you. But why they ban I? Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't actually mean that. But yeah, Johnny, they can play around push, but they can also just kill me. All right, take it easy. So I'm on the play, get Thoughtseize. We kind of have game against each kind of deck, and we have Delirium. So I'm going to keep this. This is kind of another, a bit of a loose one, but I am going to keep this. Yes, I would agree. I would agree, Archmage. We do not want that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna next level the Moto Scrybug and I'm gonna fetch it. Because we only play one in the deck. I kinda just wanna take relic. The problem is if I don't take if I leave him with relic and that cuts off Tarmogoyf. And that cuts off um, the next fury hitting. Yeah, I kind of want to take relic because, like, I might rip another discard spell in two draws. Yeah. The relic cuts off like a lot of our deck. So 100% guaranteed to fetch. So I guess I might as well check out the top card of their deck. It's like a it's like a lightning bolt. Maybe I won't play this thing. We could draw into stub. To search, okay. All right. They are far seeking. Really, you're far seeking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We played a mountain. You're far seeking. And it's not the ground. That seems bold. In the eye. Like just don't care. Alright, let me check out my top card and then think if it matters. If I fetch or not. Think of the points. Liliana of the Veil. Three. Three. Seventeen. Nine. I guess it's the same over two turns, anyways. I think the Liliana is worth having. Because Liliana is either an answer to Primeval Titan 
if we don't like hurt ourselves too much or it'll put pressure on their hand and then we can fatal push this um, Steve to get our attack in. Mountain. So opponent goes search full retail, try Elder. So maybe I don't play Liliana this turn and I try to Edict the Titan. So I know my opponent has a forest. No, I turned off my auto heal. No. So I know they have a forest, so. They have another forest. So they go Valakut, Valakut, Mountain. Thing is, they're going to be able to kill my Death Shadow either way. So I think I'm going to attack. I guess I died of like a ramp spell. But like, I'm okay with that. Like we gotta hustle up this clock here, and this makes it so that I guess Teamer Battle Rage on the Tarmogoyf was live anyway, so maybe it wasn't okay, it wasn't right to do that. Yeah, that was probably wasn't right to do. Okay. Valakid, Valakid. Yep, and this deals six. probably shoots my death shadow but if they shoot my death shadow oh that's just gravy my opponent's getting cute with this yeah so now they're just dead let's say a lightning bolt if one of these cards is a lightning bolt then they are, then I am dead. Unless I Street Wraith into a Stubborn Denial. But I won't even be able to Street Wraith into the Stubborn Denial because they'll send both at me. The opponent's just hoping we, we crack this fetch land. But we're not going to. That is not a part of the plan. <clears throat> there we go. Turn five him. My girl, my homegirl, Liliana the Veil. Vale. So I like to cut my removal spells and then just bring in a little tit for tat here. And that's how we're going to do it. The hostage taker is kind of too cute. I don't really know what else I would cut for it either. I'm going to grab some more water. I'll be right back. Seek on the draw, but I got no pressure here. I can get a better six. This is a marginally better six. Put that on the bottom. We need to find, we need to find Death Shadow. That's what we need. I feel like that's what I say every time I play this deck, though. 17, you guys help, help me out. So I'm using my mana, so I'm going to fetch first. I guess I'll fetch for Blood Crypt. This gets me Breeding Pool. And then I can cast everything in my deck. Cycle this first. Alright, found a Shadow. Alright. 
that's 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 what they're gonna do. So now I'll probably play Death Shadow and Traverse. Now I'm not gonna do that. Now I'm just gonna get Watery Grave. We can get our homeboy into play. I wonder if I guess like if you're gonna play a, a deck that can keep a hand like that, it is it is this kind of deck. I hope this Liliana is enough though. Like if I don't hit like I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need more than this Liliana to win this game. Okay. Plays Mountain Cast Search. So I know three out of the four cards. So I think I actually can kill my opponent next turn. So the question is. What do I play around? They play Cinderblade. I guess I discard my Abrupt Decay so that my um so that my Traverse is turned on next turn, just in case for some. I mean, I'm gonna have to cast the Traverse anyways to kill them. But if my opponent doesn't have like ramp spell search, ramp spell scape shift, which they would need. There's Cinderblade. Which have nothing. Right? I mean, don't I just? How do I? How do I lose? Fourteen. So I guess I'll tick up, ditch this. Fetch land. I guess, bro, you didn't turn for me, so I'll turn for you. I might restart Moto here. Yeah, I always do that. I always do that. I always make that mistake. Yeah, I always, I never play around Bayloth when I do that. Which, like, I'm 99% sure my opponent would have just cast the Bayloth. But, yeah. I'm going to restart. I'm going to restart Moto for a second. Toss it onto my sponsor page while we do that. Stream is sponsored to you, sponsored by Card Hoarder, sponsored by Gamer Craze, which is a store in uh, northeastern New York where I learned to play Magic. And then you guys can follow me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter and check out my YouTube page, which is linked below. But yeah, if you have any Magic Online scene or need, you should check out Card Hoarder. Gamer Craze will get their online store up soon, but if you ever go through northeastern new york that's that's where that's where you should play play lobby moto's turning back on it's probably because of how like my lighting is in my um in my apartment And plus, like, all the best work in this stream happens in the morning, so the chat's just, like, brainwashed to think it's the morning. All right, I guess Moto is still loading. It's been a slow, slow night for traffic, but... I mean, I guess that's what happens when you stream 
when you stream at night. Let's jump into this here. Yeah, I should I should get rid of my. What I should do is I should have get rid of some of my freeform decks. I like back when I was when I first started playing, Moto used to freeform all of your cube decks and save them, and that's messing me up. I'm gonna keep my hand. Yeah, that's what I should have done. That's what I should do, but like that just takes so much effort. Cool spoilers today that I saw. They still do. I, I, I just looked through and it doesn't ever have like the new ones up. We have Basic Island. You don't say discard spell. Fetch that away. I wonder what this means. I guess I might as well check out what's on top. I'll check out their top cards that I draw. Get three draws to look at a stub for something. Yeah, they look like they had some good stuff. Like, again, I don't know if any of it's going to be able to deal with like energy because energy is just very good but yeah i saw that i also like do you see that huge that huge dinosaur like that huge dinosaur was sweet um we're not going to fight over this that huge dinosaur was sweet that like card that we get triple bobble gets you to the cities Thing is, our promise gets you to the city's blessing. Yeah, it does. Okay, so we drew the stub, so hopefully we get to stub something here. If not, I would assume that we get to stub something on our opponent's turn. I wonder if our opponent's playing Splinter Twin or if they're playing Storm or the Blue Red Breach deck. Hell, now I'm a little confused. All right, we're gonna use our mana this turn. So let's go get an overgrown tomb. Yeah, like that dinosaur rampant growth. All right, we're drawing hot. Should I lead next? This is like, my opponent's just like screaming counter spell. The thing with like the energy decks, is it like, if there's any really like busted cards from the new set, the energy decks will just play them. You know? Am I playing against a Death Shadow deck? Like what is going on? Like if I was playing against a Death Shadow deck, they'd have much more velocity. They're probably gonna go for the old Blood Moon. Yeah, that's what this feels like. And then I don't think I'm going to play Tarmogoyf next turn. I think I'm just going to... Well, now we're going to make a decision. Yeah, I guess that's alright. Alright, so I'm actually just going to take Pestermite. Fetch an Overgrown Tomb. Crack. 
should tell I should Facebook Johnny tell him playing against the twin deck. I was shook when they spoiled a pirate lord. Yeah. Yeah, the pirate card does not seem very good. I've just been excited about the di the dinosaur cards and the merfolk cards. Those are what I've been excited to see. Maybe I should have just... No, I'm so stupid. I should have just played Tarmogoyf and then just team or battle raged my opponent. So they went island. Yeah, that was so stupid. I should have just team or battle raged my opponent out. I mean, like, there's definitely a good chance I can just do it right now. There's like a 100% chance I can just do it right now. But, but that was that was also just stupid. Okay, so against this twin deck, even though Stub doesn't stop much of the combo, I do like Stub because it stops Moon and Cryptic Command, which is like pretty important to keeping them alive. I'm not super in love with Liliana's and the draw. Well, I guess that doesn't matter anymore because they don't twin you. I have like old, old twinness stuck in my head. I guess I can cut two of those. Last Hope is reasonable and so is Staticaster. You're just saying it picks off Snapcaster Mages and Deceiver Exarches. Exarches. They're also going to bring in... I guess they're going to bring in cards like P and K, which make Veils worse. Let's try this. I want to leave my removal in. I don't think... I don't think I want to move into like a Lingering Souls deck. Yeah, I think this is just what we're going to do. I might board a little differently on the play. Yeah. That's how this deck wins, but that's how the old twin deck used to win most of its matches. The old twin deck used to just, like, win, you know, be linear... Turn, try to turn four people. Yeah, we gotta shut this. We just don't have any interaction. We need interaction. Because the dino and an exploration effect. Is that the double one? The one that does it twice? Alright, heater. Another heater. <laughs> it's like a commander player's white dream. Alright, nothing. That is interesting. So I think we're gonna get we're gonna get overgrown tomb to start. As that is the best land in the deck. Well, let's see what our opponent's got. All right, Harvest Fire, Lightning Bolt, Mom and Pop, Pestermite, Spell Snare. I kind of want to take Mom and Pop. Because, like, this harvest prayer is kind of annoying. But, I like, mom and pop seem so off, but, like, they're just going to mess me up. Alternatively, I can take lightning bolt and then try to stick a shadow next turn by stubbing this harvest fire. Yeah, I think that's better.
Well, you can go. Um, that that's also going to be good in standard, right? Because um, you can go like walking ballista into that guy, and then it's pretty insane. Not walking ballista, snake into that guy, and that's pretty insane. So even if my opponent does harvest fire this, and it's still going to get me like one card closer to delirium. Is harvest fire an instant? Yeah, so they're, they're playing around stub. Our opponent knows what's up. I might stub it anyways, just to make sure that I have Delirium, which feels kind of mopey, but my opponent also might like dirtle around and like cast this Pestermite. So yeah, they're going to dirtle. They start playing around like a Street Wraith. That's weird. Oh, Harvest Pyre is an instant. Okay. Crack for one. And I guess I just traverse for another basic. It's going to kind of suck for my opponents. I guess my opponent's last card was Moon. They were going to give me anyways. Like a little pestermite, let him tap down something. Yeah, they can start getting the beats on a little bit. Yeah, we're playing against the uh, twin deck, Johnny. We're in a bit of trouble. I won game one. Just kind of got under him, thread the needle. <laughs> Walls. Incoming salt from Johnny. I can already f hear, feel him. Is that like the Jedi you say? I can feel the rage flowing through him. <coughs> so they would bottom. Bottom top. So that means they're probably going to play Pink K next turn. Maybe they'll like mess this up and attack me. So many people love Splinter Twin. Like just, just let them, let them sit there and reminisce about the good times they had. The good thing is, is if my opponent taps out and come at Celestial Colonnade. It's like, don't you whatever the guy from the, um, that movie, the Tau Day Nights, like, don't you bring that evil in here, Ricky Bobby. So my opponent taps out in Harvest Fires, then I'm gonna jam this Liliana. I'm gonna edict them. Next turn, I'll take up, discard something, and then traverse for hopefully Grimflare. <laughs> yes. I feel like the blue, blue white doesn't like other decks that play at instant speed. Because you're like this big, plodding, clunky deck. Yeah. Like, you don't like decks that can sit there and, like, dirtle around and, like, fling a lightning bolt at your face. You know, electrolyze you. Like, those kind of decks are not super great to play against. My opponent, my opponent is taking their sweet time with this. Nope, looks like they're gonna... Opponent's gonna get into a holding pattern.
All right, so I guess we lead off here. I think it was awkward. That was like a not a very good play for my opponent, I think. There's a Repticay. Then we'll pass. Here's the mom and pop. This is where I probably didn't play this right. I was just playing too fast. I should have just jammed. Because now I don't have like a really good board presence in the face of this mom and pop here. Alright, so that was pretty good. So I guess I fetch like a red source. <clears throat> well, first off I attack. My opponent wants to trade their entire mom and pop from my death shadow. Then we'll take that. And then I'll just start going up with this Liliana. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think I still want to go up here. Deal nine. I'm going to Edict, which is like not really going to amount to much, but if they go deal with a Liliana, then it's going to give me Delirium to go with another Death Shadow. And now our stub's like fully turned on. At least it deals with one of these stupid cards. Request Bodek Yellow in a time like this. What's that, Johnny? <clears throat> oh, it's... It's just... Especially considering we can't cast the Mom and Pop, it's super greedy. E E for one. Engineered explosives for one. No. We can't take them home with us. No matter what, they're gonna get the death shadow off the board. I guess that makes it less efficient. Oh it does, if for any color mana. Just not the same turn, yep. So they're going to Harvest Pyre this, and then I can Thought Seize something, and then Traverse for another Death Shadow. They might not kill the Liliana. Like, they might just be like, we're going, yeah. It's probably the, oh, they're just going for me. I probably just tick up, traverse, play death shadow. Now see, I don't have double green. My greed is getting to me. Let's take a look. I guess my opponent's got a lightning bolt from dead. So now, Take Snapcaster Mage, Traverse for Death Shadow, Tick Up. So he's have a remand and snare or land. Yeah, we do. We have Delirium. For sure. So my opponent attacks me. <clears throat> they attack Liliana. Which is the real... So they drew an opt. Let's hope they put this on the bottom. Bottom. They put a card on top. Okay.
Yeah, we've had Delirium for, for years, Archmage. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it, sir. So I might have to, like... I'm gonna think about my plays here. I mean, I'm just probably just attacking mindlessly. It has Death Shadows, Pen to Do. Just turn them sideways and go RAR. So they knew they went. They're still thinking about their scries. Taking their sweet time. So what's our best draw? Our best draw is like Team of Battle Rage. Pretty sure it's Team of Battle Rage. And top, top G's. Okay. So you have. Alright, so we've got this spell snare, and that's it. Where is this going? At Liliana. Alright, let's check out one of those top cards. It's probably like Lightning Bolt. Electrolyze. So they go Electrolyze into land, they kill me. So let's swing in here. Because, right, Electrolyze in the land, and they got me. Unless I find a way to kill this Thopter in my opponent's upkeep before they, um, before they get six mana. Because that, that's what, what, they, what they kept top top. Oh, that's so stupid. Oh, gosh, that was so stupid on my part. I looked at that. Oh, that was so bad. Yeah. No, you were right there, Archmage, as well. No, that was stupid. I just lost this game because now they just gave me. Yeah, that was dumb. I even looked beforehand, but if they, if they have land into throw, I'm dead anyways. Yeah, that was stupid. I just tossed that one. Yeah, I mean, I just just lot, tossed that one hundred percent. So I didn't see any moons at all. So I wonder if I should change something there. Hopefully, I can win this. We'll start this league out. A sad, either what, o two or one and one. One and one's as good as you can start if we're using the first one. This is probably going to be my last match of the night, now that I think about it. Like, I'm getting a little tired. I do like the feel of this this list, though. Pick this league back up in the morning. What match are we even in? We're in match three. I'm going to keep this because we have a chance at turn one delirium if we get to stub something and we get to like manipulate the top of our deck. How greedy is that? It's probably too greedy. Oh god. This is where it all could go downhill. I wish I could have fetched the breeding pool there. But the Bloodstained Mire is the land that doesn't get us the breeding pool. <laughs> I'm gonna stop this if this is a turn one anything. Alright, come on. 
on land. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. We gotta pass because I need to hold up to to stub a blood moon. Yeah, I mean we did this to ourselves. We kept a one lander that was suspect, and then we fetched. I mean we could have just fetched black green. All right, I'm just gonna stub this again. I'm just gonna like trade on resources here. We have enough cards in our hand that, like, there's no sense dying with them. Alright. Okay, so Bolt. Bolt Harvest Pyro kills Death Shadow. But if we take this Blood Moon, we're still we're still play, playing Magic here. And then, like, our opponent, we've got just Tarmogoyf in play. Then we can just, like, bring the Tarmogoyf for the rest of the game. Which, just casting Tarmogoyf might win us the game. I mean, our opponent's got to go Harvest Pyre, Lightning Bolt. I mean, yeah, it's going to make Tarmogoyf 5 sixes instead of 6 sevens. So I guess that is kind of great. We're still going to get two cards out of this. There's the Tarn. There's Rickamoon. No, they, they would be fetching if they ripped the moon. Looks like they just ripped the moon. No, the Dalkin shackles. Five mountains. I can thought seize away the harvest fire. There are five mountains. Thought seize harvest pyre. Attack. Alternatively, I can traverse for fetch land. And then crack for seven, play Tarmogoyf. Then we die to light. Traverse. I guess I can traverse just for a shock land, and then they're gonna need two, two lands to kill, to start taking any of these, and then this will, okay, yeah, so that's what we'll do. Traverse. Where's my breeding pool? <laughs> the next turn they can still bolt Harvest Pyre, one of my threats, but they can't take it with the shackles. Then if they bolt Harvest Pyre one of my threats, then when I Thought Seize them, I should be able to get something. Oh, 
Let's, it's it might do the Lord's work here in a second. Maybe I had to make so get the polluted delta. Because now they can just cast. Yeah. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, we walked into it there. Yeah, we just missed just missed that line of play. I still got my abrupt decay. The hostage taker would have been sweet. Oh, and they just got it. Oh, that was frustrating. Yeah, lost the shackles. Is there a way that I could have played that differently? I guess I could have made my death shadow bigger and died to two lightning bolts instead of like knowing what was on the board and dying like just not having played against shackles that much and thinking about this I could have just made my death shadow large enough so even if they take tarmoids they're just taking chump blockers yeah that's how I that's how I should have played it I should have just died to another lightning bolt and then if they had just taken tarmoids it would have been fine Yeah, but anyways, I, I I think let's see what we had coming here. Oh, we wait too long. Yeah, we did. That would have been interesting because like the Death Shadow would have just abyssed him. Excuse me for like the rest of the game, and I still could have played out more Tarmogoyfs. But he just blocks with my Tarmogoyf. So maybe I gotta just think to bring in Hostage Taker against this deck. Like maybe after sideboard, Hostage Taker is where I wanna be. All right, well, I appreciate everyone for watching tonight. I think this is close. This is pretty close to what I'm, I'm gonna stop recording.